In this video, I will explain neutral ground bonding, why it's important and how to create one. We'll focus on two scenarios, off-grid systems and mobile systems. Like my previous video on grounding, if there are any updates to the information provided in this video, I'll post them in the description. The neutral ground bond is essential for two reasons. First, it ensures a stable voltage reference. Secondly, it allows ground fault current interrupters and circuit breakers to function correctly, protecting against ground faults, overcurrents and electric shocks. I have created the ground neutral bond with this small jumper wire, but more on that later. A neutral ground connection, also known as a neutral to earth bond or MEM link, connects the neutral wire to the ground at one single point, typically at the main service panel, inside an inverter or in my case at the AC out terminals of the inverter. This bond ensures that the neutral remains at zero volts relative to the ground. Without this connection, the neutral will float, leading to unpredictable voltages and increased risk of electrical shock or equipment failure. The neutral ground connection also ensures that a safety device, like a ground fault current interrupter and breakers work properly, as they rely on this bond to detect ground faults and prevent dangerous situations like electric shock. How do you know if your inverter, inverter charger or all-in-one system have this ground neutral bond? Let's see what you will measure without the bonding wire. I have European inverters, so if you're in the US you can divide these measurements by two to get yours. First, let's measure without a neutral ground bond. We measure the life to the neutral and we get 230 volts. Then we'll measure life to ground and we have 93 volts. Then we'll measure neutral to ground and we have 92 volts. Now let me add the ground neutral bond. Let's do the measurements again. Life to neutral, 230 volts. Life to ground, 230 volts and neutral to ground, about zero volts. You can see that the neutral to ground is now zero volts. This makes sense because they are bonded together. These are the same values you will get when you measure your standard wall outlet. Some inverters make this bond internally. To check for a bond, you can measure the resistance between the neutral and the ground connection. If the resistance is zero or close to zero, the bond is made. If it's high or shows open loop, there is no bond. Let's quickly measure it. I'll measure the neutral to the ground and I'm measuring zero ohms. That means there is a ground neutral bond. In this case, we already made the bond right here. So that's correct. So let's explore two different systems. The first is normal off-grid systems where there's only one ground to neutral bond. And the second is where an extra ground can be added in mobile systems through shore power. 
Let's talk about a normal off-grid system. In off-grid systems, the neutral ground bond will be permanent, because this will be the only place where a ground to neutral connection can be made. It can be made in the inverter or in a distribution panel. And this is also the easiest system. Just do what I did here. Connect the ground of all your AC appliances to the grounding bus bar, as well as the grounding of the inverter. Then connect one grounding wire from the inverter to the negative wire. That is this connection. In my case, I chose to do it at the input of the ground fault current interrupter. But you can connect it to the terminal block as well. Which is this one. Just do it before your ground fault current interrupters and your breakers. So what should you do if you have multiple inverters in parallel? Only one inverter should create the ground neutral bond to avoid grounding loops. Otherwise, it will cause issues. Now, the second system are mobile systems. They are a bit more complicated. We are talking about a mobile system for a boat or an RV. It is more complicated because we plug our system into shore power. This creates another connection to ground through the shore power connection. If you only use an inverter, like this one, then you can use a transfer switch to choose between shore power or your own inverter, because your off-grid inverter cannot work with the grid. I will make a video about a transfer switch soon, otherwise this video will get too complicated. If you are using an inverter charger, like the Victron Multiplus, or an all-in-one inverter, like EG4, Growat, or other brands, you'll have two different operational modes. The first one is called inverter mode, also called off-grid mode, when you're driving on the road. The neutral ground bond is created inside the inverter, similar to off-grid systems, which we just talked about. The second one, which is the more complicated one, is called shore power mode when it's connected to an external power source. This can be when you are on a campground or a marina, plugged into shore power. When connected to shore power, you'll have two neutral ground bonds in the system. So two of these connections. One at shore power and one at your inverter charger. The bond inside the inverter charger must be disconnected because the shore power source already has a neutral to ground bond and this will create grounding loops. Let me show you the diagram on the screen. As you can see, we now have two ground neutral bonds at the same time, which we do not want. We have to disconnect the ground neutral bonds inside of the inverter charger. So how do we remove the bond when we are connected to shore power? We can do so in three different ways. The first one is manual bonding. You can manually create or disconnect the bond with a switch. But forgetting to do so could cause the ground fault current interrupter to fail. So I do not recommend this option. The second one is when you don't have an inverter charger or an all-in inverter. This is a situation I have here. If you are using a battery charger to charge the batteries, it doesn't bring in any additional grounding into the system. However, this setup has no AC pass-through, meaning you will still run appliances on battery power alone which may be insufficient for high power devices like air conditioning units. And the third and last option is to use an inverter charger or all-in-one inverter with a built-in grounding relay. The grounding relay automatically handles the bond 
depending on whether the system is in inverter or shore power mode. This is the preferred method, as you can see in this image from Victron, when shore power is connected on the left, the AC input relay will close, forcing the earth relay to open automatically. And when the AC input is disconnected, the AC input relay opens and the earth relay will close, which creates the neutral ground bond. This is a fully automated process. For RVs or boats, I suggest using an inverter charger like the Victron MultiPlus. It has a grounding relay built in, so you don't have to manage the bond or worry about it. In the next video, I will explain how a ground fault current interrupter works and how it can save your life, so subscribe to the channel to not miss it. How do you handle the neutral ground link in your system? Let me know in the comments. I have created a special playlist with videos for beginners. You can watch it here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.